Bunch of kids disappeared in this pizzeria, and they never were found. And now, I can swear that they can hear some children's voices coming behind these walls. Trust me, Fiona. It's better for him to be alone right now. I was with him when we discovered his brother's body. Even I was shocked from what we witnessed. I still can't imagine what kind of sick mind was able to do that. Although Jonathan mentioned that his brother told him something about animatronics, that they were acting strange. But our specialists haven't found any malfunctions yet. Oops, my bad. Fuck you. I still can't believe it. But, but whoever is behind this murder, he won't be enjoying freedom for long. I know that Jonathan will find him. And I will do all that I can to help him with that. As will I. 
But for now, let's give him some time to recover. And to be honest, I think there is something wrong with this pizzeria. People say that they hear and see some crazy stuff there. Even I thought for a moment that I saw a kid on the cameras. Something tells me that this won't be an easy case. We will still solve it. No doubt in that. of your daughter. Much appreciated. Two weeks have passed since the body of my brother Mike was discovered at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. And still, we didn't manage to find the murderer. There were no signs of force entry, and our specialists didn't manage to find any malfunctions in animatronics. I'm telling you, detectives, one more time, there is no way these animatronics could move or even lift a finger. All power was deactivated a long time ago. Also, there is no way anyone could hide inside of them. As for the only witnesses we had, Mr. Fritz Smith, who was the owner of a pizzeria and who was the first one to discover the body of my brother, he had a strong alibi on that night. I don't understand this. I already told police everything. What else you want me to say? Mr. Fritz Smith. Tell us once again what really happened in your pizzeria with Mike Schmidt. Though I have to admit, there was something suspicious about him. And even though we were almost in the dead end with this case, I still wasn't planning to give up. And what is most important, I wasn't alone in this. There were people who were the same way as I, eager to find the truth. Among them were my partner, Detective Mark Davis and Detective Fiona Scott, with whom we had some history. While almost forgetting about sleep and mostly living only on a coffee, me and my team were trying to get to the truth and as a result we were able to dig up something. Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria already had a dark past. In the 87, a bunch of kids went missing in it. There was also a private investigation with a goal to find them, but it ended up with the horrible deaths of several people. And it wasn't all. The more we used to learn, the more I realized that I draw myself and my people into the dangerous game, price in which is human life. Also, since I practically lived by this investigation, from time to time, I start seeing things like the missing kids and those animatronics. Better to say, a horrifying versions of them, which my mind had created. They were motionless and silently watching me. And sometimes... I couldn't stop. I was fully realizing that I became obsessed with this case and that there might be serious consequences to that. But I had this feeling that I was getting close to the truth. And no matter what, I had to continue. I didn't want Mark and Fiona to get worried about my condition. And due to that, I tried to keep it as a secret from them, though I think they already started noticing that there was something wrong with me, especially Fiona. Sometimes I had this feeling that this woman used to know me better 
than I do myself. Due to that, for some time, I decided to avoid seeing them in person. But despite all the difficulties and dangers that were faced, I think I finally managed to find the person who was responsible for the death of my brother and all our horrible murders that were connected with Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria. And tonight, I'm planning to find it for sure. What was her name again? Uh, Linda Jones. She's a journalist. Uh, remember, in the 80s she did an investigation about missing children. Her name was definitely in the files which we looked for. Okay, I will look inside. How do you feel, by the way? Uh, I'm good, thank you. And what are you planning to do on your own? Listen, I plan to go to the pizzeria again. I want to check something. I think I might have a new clue. Uh, listen, I'll tell you about it later on, in person. Do I need our help? Thank you, Fiona. But I'll manage on my own.
still remember that beautiful day when me and my mom came to this magical place. What a day it was! Happiness, joy, and laughter were everywhere. It was the first time I saw Freddy, Chica, Bonnie, and Foxy. Oh, how miraculous it all was. And then, you show up. True evil in the flesh. The cunning devil who kidnapped me and many others. The monster who we started calling the purple guy. Pizzeria's playroom. That was the place where you kidnapped us. And that was the place where you had your secret room. I always knew that people were searching for us. For days and nights, we were screaming and calling for help. Help us! Help! We are here! Hoping that someone would hear us. heard us. And help never came. However, I didn't lose hope, as I always knew that I would get out, no matter what. And then, one day, some miracle, you forgot to lock the door. And we managed to escape. Yet, our freedom didn't last for long. As it was all just a part of your sick plan. All the doors were locked, while you were calmly pursuing and capturing us. And when all the other kids lost their hope and accepted their fate, I still was not planning to give up. Anger and hatred filled my soul towards you because of everything you had done to us. I knew that I would get out of this room and get my revenge no matter the cost. My soul will not rest until you receive your deserved retribution. Hours turned to days, days turned to months, months turned to years. We did not manage to escape, and no one rescued us. My body has been long dead. But my soul was still alive. The soul which was now driven by only one desire. Revenge. And I was not alone. Through decades, our souls tried to get me. But you always managed to escape. 
there were a lot of deaths during this time, some caused by your actions, and some by ours. Because of you, we became monsters ourselves. Monsters who brought horror and death. You thought that you were invincible. Yet with every year, our powers got stronger. While you were getting older and weaker. And in the end, we managed to get you. Finally, you got what you deserved. You always used to laugh in the face of death when you tortured and killed others. Yet now, when you face the death yourself, where is that smile? There is none. There is only fear and pain in your eyes. And while your body is bleeding out, and you are almost at the last breath, I finally feel that our souls can rest in peace. At last, we are free. As for you, your soul will never find peace. Eternal torment and suffering awaits you. And the dungeon you created for others will become your prison from now on. Nightmare is far from its end. The worst is yet to come.
This story starts with a tragedy, when five innocent children were kidnapped from Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, and no one could find them. Time flew, but despite their efforts, the police were still unable to find any information about the missing children. And then, one day, three strangers, who were driven by the same desire to uncover the truth, decided to start their own investigation. It was hard to say, was it a coincidence or was it intended by fate? But on the same day, in the same place, these three strangers met each other. And that place was the pizzeria from where the children were kidnapped.
Among those strangers was a police detective by the name Brian Clark, the person who couldn't just witness the unsuccessful work of his colleagues and decided to start his own investigation off the book. Another stranger was a private detective by the name Jeremy Fitzgerald, a master of his craft who was hired by a mother of a missing child. And the last stranger was me, Linda Jones, a news reporter from Arkham Advertiser, the person who was planning, no matter what, to discover the truth and find the missing kids. And also to find out what really happened to my colleague and good friend, Ben Richard, who was brutally murdered while working on this case before me. Since we all had the same goal, we decided to join our forces and discover the truth behind the children's disappearance together. Yet, there are secrets, doors to which should never be opened. In total, our team consisted of four people. There was me, Brian, Jeremy, and Vincent. Vincent was a humble and quite unsociable man who was working for Brian. While being undercover, he was working as a day shift security guard at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria and was providing us with useful information. Our target was the owner of the pizzeria, Daniel Smith, or rather to say his office. Based on Vincent's information, there was a secret room located in that office behind which we were expecting to find the missing children, or at least some information about them. To get in that secret room, you had first to press a hidden button beneath Daniel's table. That would set off a mechanism which would open a way to the locked door. A key to that locked door was always with Daniel Smith on his neck. Yet, that was not a big problem for us, as almost every lock could be easily broken. And luckily, I was a specialist in that. As for Daniel Smith himself, not much was known about him. Only that a few years back, he inherited the family business from his father after he died. Daniel Smith also had a younger brother, by the name Fritz Smith. Yet he had gone missing several months ago, and nobody had seen him since then. According to Brian's words, Daniel Smith was a true evil in the flesh, the person who we should all be afraid of. Brian used to interrogate him several times in the past, and based on his words, never in his life has he seen such an evil and dangerous look as he witnessed in Daniel Smith's eyes. But Daniel Smith was not our main problem. Something else created by him was causing a bigger threat to us. And because of those things, we were not able to simply break into the pizzeria in the middle of the night. Hard to imagine how Daniel Smith was able to create those animatronics and make them freely move around the pizzeria during the night. But in case they saw someone, they would immediately attack him. Due to that, one thing was obvious. Getting in there during a night without any help from inside would be too dangerous. But we quickly managed to find a solution to this problem. Through the entire week, every night, we were actively making diversions near the pizzeria, and those kind of actions eventually would achieve their goal, as it forced Daniel Smith to hire a night shift security guard to look after the pizzeria and straight away inform him if anything happens. And thanks to our efforts, Jeremy was hired to this position as a night shift security guard. Yet even though we now had our people inside, still, Getting into Daniel Smith's office 
turned out not to be an easy task. Starting on the first night, everything went not according to plan. Jeremy said that it was too dangerous for me to get inside of the building, as he still could not understand how exactly those animatronics were moving around the pizzeria, and with what time frame. okay down there. Well, there's one way to find out. Hey, Jeremy, are you still alive down there? Of course. Do you already expect me to die soon? Who knows, who knows. So, how are things down there? Well, right now, I look at the monitors, drink coffee, and play with a mask of a... I think it's a bear. Yep. With the mask of the bear? Yeah, I know. It might sound funny, but according to the pizzeria owner's words, if those animatronics see me, I have to put it on straight away, since then they will consider me as one of their own and won't try to attack me. Of course, it does sound stupid, but just in case, I keep it close to me. It does sound funny. Anyway, keep us informed if something happens. Will do. Over. What do you think? Will we find those five missing kids in there? I hope. And by the way, there were actually six of them. Six? Yes, the boy named Timmy. It was a quite old and very complicated case, way before me. All I know is that that missing kid, how to say this properly, he was not mentally healthy and due to that, almost zero information was presented to the public. That is weird. I had done some research before, but haven't seen anything about the sixth one. This is strange. Trust me, I know the feeling. But we live in Arkham, and here, strange things are common. But don't worry, I bet soon we will find those kids or at least some information about their fate. We just need to get into that room. We will. That's the spirit. Have a good night, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you for your advice, Vincent. I'll be sure to do so. Okay, let's see, what's going on down there? Hmm? Where did you go? Smith was not lying, and the mascot mask did help. But as we soon will find out, there was something else in that pizzeria, which would not be fooled by that mask. <laughs> On the second night, things went smoother, as I was able to sneak in. Yet, as soon as I got in, new obstacles appeared in my way. Despite the fact that Jeremy was assured that he accurately learned the behavior and movement routes of those animatronics, as soon as I got in, they all began a targeted hunt for me. All right, Linda, it seems to be clear. You may go.
Yeah, I am fine. 